Welcome back Legionnaires and we're here with another Rome 2 siege view today and this is an excellent 4v4 siege battle sent in by some of the subs on the discord so if you want to join the discord to send in your own replays or just take part in some battles that may then feature on the channel the link is down below in the description um, but yes yeah, so this is an excellent battle I've been told it is very close right down to the wire so I am looking forward to see what, how this one goes, but we have some uh, auxiliary Syrian archers here just taking out a African Bastion Ballista, setting it alight so they can't use that against them. But yes, we have Kush, Masaisley, we have Bactria, and we have Mastodon inside this cell, and very cramped inside here in Inkyra. Um, but we also have, outside attacking, we have the Seleucids, who are attacking from this side. We don't usually see attackers come from this side, but this will be fun to see. We have uh, Rome. Arverni and another Macedonian army. And I just realized Masaisley is going to be doing an old bridge, uh, well, defense. Uh, this will be painful for Seleucids, I'm sure. I think they can come across from other places, like across this river here, but who knows? We'll have to see uh, what they do and do. They've got de Desert Vigilates. I've never seen these guys before. Another, like, Roman style unit. Yeah, they look okay. <laughs> they look okay, average at best. But yeah, so if you've been enjoying the content at the moment, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and a, um, and a comment, I guess, to show your support. And uh, yeah, let's get on with the battle. Anyway, I've just seen straight away, um, we have some, I'm looking like some, the sailing cavalry going straight out. They're going to go and try and take out this uh, ballista, but they've got focus down by javelins. And there we go, in they go. I'm going to try and take out this ballista. I don't think this is a real big like objective because this is a fixed ballista so it can't go anywhere so like late game it can't be used um but they've gone for it anyway and they've risked their cavalry um this is sailing cav which could have gone after archers i mean i don't know if they can see the archers for gold because they are often hid hidden there are some here i think this is his only unit unless they're also hidden to me which is quite possible but um yeah, it'll be interesting to see who comes out on top on this front, certainly. I mean, Arverni certainly got a lot of really strong melee troops. I mean, but Mastodon also has a lot of strong, like, spears and pikes, obviously. Kush against Rome will be a very nice uh, fight. It looks like some Kushite archers getting focused down from somewhere. I'm not quite sure where. Maybe on the wall? I don't know. I oh, know here. They're being hit by artillery, I wonder. But yeah, this will be a classic fight here. Kush and Rome seems to be the strongest factions in the game. Good to see who wins that. Bactria looks like he's shaping up to take on Masson with the help of a bit of Masaisley. He's got some uh, heavy Numidian skirmishes here ready. These guys look awesome. And look at the sun. Like, we're just... It's about to go, like, dark, and then this battle begins. And we've got another Sally out. And these Sally's out coming out, like, at their own, like, individual points. We've got Hellenic Cataphracts going after the archers. Um, I'd say they're pretty well protected. They've got the companion cavalry here. We've got some uh, foot companions racing up to go and help. And we've got some uh, citizen cav as well. And the cataphracts here have thought twice about it and thought, nah, this is uh, not for us. And we're going to come back inside. Are they going to get caught? Quite possibly. Yeah, they are. They are going to get caught. That is unfortunate for them. Oh, and the oil comes down. And that's going to have killed friend and foe. Look at this guy. He's so lucky. Yeah, I actually got mainly cataphracts, I think. That is unfortunate. I think it got like one citizen cav. <laughs> yeah. These cataphracts definitely came off a lot worse out of that. Um, and yeah, they're getting burnt again with oil. Oh, yeah, look at that. He's just charged through his own oil. Oh, dear. Yeah, that was not worth it at all, that charge out. Um, so I guess, well played by Mastodon. He actually did a lot of damage. Uh, and now they obviously know about this Hellenic cataphract being there. So that's going to have to go out somewhere new. They want to use that, or they can just use it like late game around the back here. I don't know. There's a there's probably a plan, a plan in place. But it does look like Seleucid's first to the wall. Um, he has got, I mean, no defense to worry about. Though his tower is actually about to burn down. It's taking them that long to get across. This tower is nearly burnt into the ground. Silver shield swords inside. They should be able to capture this pretty easily. Um, but yeah, so he should be okay. I mean, he's got Arthur here. So he's got this Greek giant ballista here. I mean, this is just unfortunate. And uh, he can't move it. So it's, he's just going to have to keep it here for the entire game. And hope that he can hit stuff all the way back here. Which he might be able to do. But yeah, so there we go. We've got Seleucids are in. Um, 
looks like Arverni is just about to arrive as well, though he looks like he's taking his time. Allowing, uh, I thought he had ballistas possibly on top of his towers. But no, he looks like he's just taking his time. And Rome is almost here as well. So that's good. So we've nearly got some engagement. I think Mastodon will be last because he had the bit of the Sally to worry about. This tower is also pretty beaten up. Evercarty cohort. Some towers, they're taking a long time. <laughs> what happens when you uh, take forever to move your towers up? Look, they're literally moving like one inch, then stopping and starting. Don't know if it's just because of the train they're going over. Quite possibly is. Usually they just move at a steady pace. These ones are stopping and starting and it's costing them the towers, I guess. They should be able to get in and probably take uh, the walls. They've got slave infantry, social warriors to worry about. Yeah, nothing too major, especially for Evercarty. I mean, social warriors are, well, might be an issue for the Evercarty, but... Yeah, looking over here, arverni has got like nearly every tower on fire. Get a move on. Get these boys to the wall. These Thoros spit or these Thoric swords, sorry, have been holding this Javi for ages, waiting for you. Here you go, got projectiles already in it, and there we go, the tower is down. And the Arverni are about to come spilling out. Looks like it's going to be some naked warriors coming out first. Um, these guys won't do so well <laughs> to just about any projectile. Obviously, not where it, there's a lack of armor. But these guys are pretty good. They're pretty good shock infantry units. They're coming off the walls. They might do okay, but in prolonged melee, they're going to get uh, trashed. So I'll have to see how they do. They haven't killed a single Thorax yet. They are light melee against very heavy, so I think that the Thorax probably might be able to deal with that. Chosen Swords here. They should be able to do okay against these um, Thorax Swords, I do imagine. I'm not sure, though. Oh my gosh, they're firing point blank range with their Cretans. I mean, these Cretans, in fairness, are just all they can see when they, like, come off the walls. is just a, a wave of Celts. <laughs> and you're just like, fire at will. Fire, hit anything you can. And here they come. Oh, Javi's coming in. And, yep, yeah, I'm seeing guys, like, just rocking a javelin in the chest now. I mean, if that's your style, just deny death. I mean, yeah, but look at this. Look at this. I mean, these Celtic... Uh, these naked warriors here getting focused down. So many already dead because of the arrows point blank range. I wouldn't even say bothering to use arrows is a, like it's not even worth it. You might as well just use javies from like the infantry. Save the arrows for other archers or for more heavily armored stuff. Like these guys were gonna die anyway. Yeah, and these naked warriors routing. Yeah, hold your fire now. They're routing. Save your ammo for the next wave. I mean, you've got uh, Levy Freeman coming up. We've got all sorts now. Uh, Mastodon looks like he's in, and he's also having a pretty tough time. He's, I mean, in fairness, Mastodon attacking, I don't think is a great idea. Um, shield barriers to start with. Good defensive unit. Uh, not necessarily a good offensive unit, though. I mean, the spears, just generally, not a good offensive unit. Royal Peltas is what you need to bring. You spam out Royal Peltas as Mastodon, and you pray um, the enemy doesn't do the same. But, I mean, yeah, I mean, this is also not helping a column formation. Like, this column formation is allowing the archers back here to fire at the back of this unit. Like, if you put it straight, it's actually a bit more of a risk because they might hit their own troops. And it's just a smaller target to aim at. But with that nice column formation, they're making it a bit easy. Uh, what's coming up? Foot companions coming up onto the, over the wall. That's a big risk. Um, until you've, like, fully captured the walls, you should never bring your pikes up. Never. They're always the last thing to go in, really. Um, like, these guys really should, like, my Aesley should really be, like, pushing on these foot companions right now. Like, don't let these guys set up. Uh, but it looks like he's gonna. Yeah, he's gonna... I mean, he's just jabbing these uh, shield barriers instead. He'd rather do that. But yeah, these foot companions really need to... Uh, well, get set up quite quickly. <laughs> like, there's a lot of units ready for them. Scale... Oh, scale thorax hot plates. Don't often see this unit on the battlefield. So I'm gonna have a quick look. Does look very cool. Does look very cool. I think they are slightly better than uh, Thoros, but I could be wrong. But yeah, there you go. So they've not set up their pikes, and these guys are just going to get munched up by the uh, Desert Legionnaires. Or Desert Cohort, I think these guys are. Yeah, these guys are in for a rough battle. How's Seleucid doing? Has he made it to the gate? Has he made it to the bridge of death yet? No, he's not made it quite yet to the bridge of death. And Mercedes has actually allowed him to come across by the looks of it. Looks like uh, he's moved a lot of his desert cohort over to this side, shifting them here. 
Um, looks like we're going to see some Royal Peltas possibly chasing these Desert Vigilates. I mean, this is going to be really hard to take. This is the other river crossing they can take. I presume they can come across this bridge. I mean, I'll turn some of these Mercy Syrians around. I don't know whether... Oh, actually, no. You might need them here. There's a lot of... A lot of shield bearers. Yeah. All of these shield bearers. And they've got more Thorax Swords here ready just to flank around. Mastodon's having a really tough time. He's almost getting double teamed here by Bactrim Mercedesley. I mean, Mercedesley's almost just being supported generally everywhere. Rome. He's got Soki Extraordinary. He's brought up quite a strange army. I presume the funds are pretty low. For Rome not to be spamming out like legionnaires. He's got like gladiators, Soki. Uh, I mean, he's doing pretty poorly actually. I mean, he's against Kush in fairness. Oh, I do apologize. But um, yes, it does seem like he's out. Well, he's not doing poorly. He's just having a rough time. This first wave is uh, always going to be a hard one. It's probably why Gladiators is sending first. Um, but yeah, so I mean, these guys uh, fighting show to warriors. I mean, all they got to do is weaken them, and then I hope that the next light wave come up and they can do the damage, like Praetorians or Armored Legionnaires or more Evercati. I'm not actually quite sure what they did, but they got War Dogs. Uh, okay, Rome looks like he's actually spent most of his infantry into this assault. Yeah, I don't know where the rest of... <laughs> Rome brought a really small army, or Rome just disintegrated. Um, but yeah, he's got Sokei Extraordinary, and he's got Praetorians in here already, and they're losing. Kush is just wrecking him. And Macedon's over here helping out. It looks like uh, Arverni's had a really good success, though, against Macedon. He is, like, mopping up what is left. I mean, though he's not got much left himself. I mean, he's not got much in reserve. But... Who knows? Who knows? I mean, it's going to come down. I think Seleucid and Arverni are going to have to do a lot of the heavy lifting from now. Rome is, uh, Rome's probably just got the job of uh, killing as many men as possible and hoping that he doesn't die first. But, I mean, yeah, you can see this is, I mean, a bit in the wooded area or like Flario. Look how tall, these flowers are taller than men. But, I mean, yeah, these Osaka Extraordinary are just going to get outmatched. I don't know. Like I said, the funds must have been pretty low. Might have been bringing it, better bring like Princapes and stuff like that. They're pretty solid. Or Triari. Um, but yeah, certainly bringing War Dogs is not a great idea. They're focusing down the general now of Rome as well. Oh no! Oh no, he's down to nine new men already. Jeez, another volley and he's dead. Is the Roman player not realised this? Surely he's going to move his general. There he goes. Finally moves it. But it routes. And there you go. Rome's general's dead and that, that's Rome basically done. Rome is uh, basically out of the battle. I mean, luckily, I guess for Rome, he only uh, he only routed. He didn't die, which has a bit more of a morale damage, but still, not good. And there you go, more Romans breaking. I mean, they're pretty beaten up anyway, these guys. Oh, no, that's not good. We'll have a look here. And there you go, those Romans are breaking. There's a tiny unit of Evercati that's all it's holding over here, really, now. I mean, there's some Praetorians. But yeah, they've nearly mopped up this side. Uh, yeah, it doesn't help that when there's such a small settlement, you can do this really well as defenders. Um, you can just usually, like, if you put four players here, it doesn't help that, yeah, it's a 4v3 technically at the moment. Because Seleucids is still being, I mean, he's not being passive, but he just has a long way to come. And he's now fighting in this... Uh, in this river, there's artillery going off? Who's firing artillery? Is it Seleucid? No. Who's firing artillery then? I can't see. I can't see who it is. Oh, there. It's African Onager. And he's getting a really good angle on these uh, Seleucids. Hopefully Seleucids doesn't send anything else in because this is ample having this breach here. Um, has he got stuff in reserve that's getting hit? Oh no, it's just overshot. Okay. Yeah, don't send anything else in. You should break through these vigilates there. Just vigilates. Um, they are losing decisively. Yeah, they're just holding up this army before he then uh, has to... Well, well, so he can use his artillery. He might be better just waiting. Oh, here comes a good shot. Oh no, going into the water, these guys. Yeah, look at this thin line of vigilates now. Jeez. But yeah, these Vigilates are not going to hold long. Oh, that's a good hit. 
I mean, actually, was it? I mean, they're all in the war, so it's not actually as, like, effective to use these, uh... I definitely wouldn't be surrounding these Royal Peltas. Move these guys on. they just got to go on. They're going to get shot on the back. These guys, these Vigilators are just going to break anyway. Send the Royal Peltas into the next line. These Royal Peltas might be able to take out Desert Legionnaires, to be honest. But, um, yeah, so they're already fighting the next line. We've got Thorax Swords here already fighting Legionnaires. These aren't as good as the Cohort. The Cohort are better. Um, but these guys will still put up a good, good fight. They are Legionnaires after all, as the sun comes beating down. That looks beautiful, actually. I feel like this is how, like, Roman Legionnaires would have been, like, in the East. They'd have had, like, almost, like, sort of a tur- Maybe not, not like a turban, but something over their face, like, their mouth. Keep the sand out. Kind of cool. I don't know. Um, I know that, like, Roman uniforms differed, like, throughout the Empire, depending on where they were, obviously. Um, but, yeah, that would be pretty cool if they could have that in Rome, like, have Eastern Legions and Western, well, like, Western Legionnaires and Eastern Legionnaires, um, sort of, like, or, like, wherever you were in the world, like, the Legionnaires, for instance, just changed their uniform, like, automatically. That would be pretty cool. I know, obviously, Rome won't come and do that. Maybe a mod will come and do that. I don't know. But, obviously, CA, yeah, won't come and do that because, uh, well, Rome 2's basically finished a done deal for them. Finished. No more work needed. Cavalry? What's this cavalry doing over here? Then we've got Masesley's cavalry, Numidian riders, and we've got the Hennig Cataphrax back. Um, oh, they're probably going to go deal with Mastodon because Mastodon is starting to uh, cause a few issues. I mean, I say that. I mean, the Desert Cohort is still losing. Actually, everything here is. Oh, no, the Desert Cohort here is winning. They've done a lot of damage. I guess it's all it is is that Mastodon is then threatening the flank of Masesley, Um where Seleucid is coming over. If Mastodon and Seleucid link up, that's pretty worrying for the defenders. But I mean, they've taken Rome out, so they've done they've done the job. I would say that I wouldn't say any of the defenders have really been knocked out of the game. Kush is a bit low, but he's still got a lot of Shota Warriors left, which are obviously very useful. Looks like it's going to be taken very slow now by uh, Arverni. I don't know why Rome yet persisted on attacking up here when, for instance, Arverni taking this gate. So he could just walk through and then he could have joined up with Arverni and then he could have pushed on. Well, Arverni should have helped Rome a bit more. He should have pushed to help like Rome at these walls. But see, it does look like is just going to be focusing down hot plights and uh, maybe his slingers. I don't know. He's not even going for them. I'll go for the companion cavalry general back here. Just chilling. Not even going to... Like, move. And then what we've got here, we've got pikes. Yeah, another good uh, target. I definitely would be possibly wanting to sneak around these oath sworn here. Could either get around the back here and just flank this royal peltast while the chosen sword engage. And then you've got a bit of an issue going on again. But, I mean, it doesn't help that then they'd be obviously, a, their flank would then be very vulnerable to uh, Mercedes and Bactria. So, I mean, I think the defenders are doing a good job. They certainly, I think Seleucids is going to be. One of the players that's going to have to change it, shake up this uh, this battle. How are the Legionnaires doing? They seem to be doing okay. One's losing. Uh, two are losing, actually. I'm going to send in some Thoros Spears. I think they can hold them at this, bre at this breach for a long, long time. They've got plenty of stuff. Especially if our Vernian stuff's going to be so passive. I do love a river crossing. It's they're always bloody and close. Well, I mean, usually they're close, unless it's like just pikes just waiting, and then the def and the attacker just doesn't bring archers up. Then it's never close. Uh, I've never done that myself personally, <laughs> but um, I've seen it happen before. But more desert legionnaires over here now. I mean, they're just getting ready to strengthen this line. Actually, they might be over. Yeah, Masson actually is causing some issues. It doesn't help that these Cretan archers here are doing a lot of damage. They're bringing their artillery inside. Okay, they also had an art. Oh, is that just the crew? It's just the crew. Shame. I thought their Greek ballista might be mobile. But no. So, yeah, it does look like... I think Ma Masson's nearly out as well, in fairness. Like, he's not got much infantry. He's got, what is it, two units of Royal Peltasts? Yeah. And, like, a tiny shield bearer. And that's it. I mean, yeah, he's nearly done. Bactri still looks quite good. Uh, Mercedes looks okay. The defending Masson looks okay as well. Um, Arverni's gonna 
again, also going to have to do a lot of heavy lifting here. But he's not got massive infantry himself. There's dogs in here. I didn't even realize the dogs went in. Um, they're fighting militia hotplates, actually. That's the point. I've not even looked at the quality of troops that are left, to be fair. Um, but I think most of them are just like... We're now down to the elites. Um, but I'm seeing yeah, a lot of fire coming in here. They're actually... Yeah, that militia hotplate is just going to route everything. <laughs> That's kind of a surprise. But, um, oh, and we've had a... Did they actually go in an attack? Or did they just, like... I don't know what happened here. I mean, they are actually going to route the Chosen Swords. Um, but I think they pushed out because they were... Oh, no, they did attack the uh, Arverni. Okay. They didn't flank around like I think they could have. They could have got around here, got around the stakes and got in behind. Obviously, it makes them vulnerable to, like, other archer fire and, like, reinforcements just coming up. But it's worth the risk. You've got to play risk in this. In this game. You've got to play a risk or two if you want to win. I always find. Nine times out of ten, the risk won't pay off, but... It's always worth a try. But there you go, so it looks like uh, the Companion Cav, or the Thessalian Cav, sorry, um, has, well, it did its bit, it certainly like shook these guys up, and now the Shota Warriors are in it, but they actually did a route in the end. Um, Seleucids, looks like he's doing okay, he looks like he's going to break through this next line again. Has he got pikes? He does have pikes, Thorax pikes, a long way back. Has he got pikes in here? No. Shield bearers. Hmm, you might want to send some pikes up. Break through a lot quicker. Because we've got Baxter and Royal Guard now in it. Jeez, yeah, they're really throwing stuff in here. He only brought one unit of pikes. He's got Royal Peltas all the way back here. I don't know if these guys are bugged out or what, but he's got a unit back there that might need coming up in a bit. He's running out of Arch Armor as well because his archers are starting to go into combat. They might hold them here. They might hold them. I think the pikes coming up might really save them here. But I don't know how much ammo the defense have left. I'm sure a fair amount. I don't think I've seen Bactria fire a single round off. But it's a mess down here now. It is a mess. But yeah, I mean that's what that's what it looks like currently. That's a pretty good view. Gives you a better idea of what's going on. Got the lighter blue over here with the Seleucids, or the light blue and the red, and then you've got the dark blue and the red of Bactria. And we've got a bit of uh, like the grey and yellow of Mercedes still in there. Is that a big chain route? No, okay, they're just repositioning. Oh, is I think because they've seen a gap through. I mean, if they have, that's really good. The Silver Shield could definitely get through that gap here. And then they could get in behind, and that would really cause them a... a Issues. I mean, they are sending up some more Bactrian Royal Guard. But, I mean, they are running out. Bactrian's looking a bit thin. Um, I keep thinking this Mastodon over here is uh, the attacking Mastodon, but it's not. I mean, Alverni, I think, starting to get cleaned up a little bit. Yeah, he is starting to get cleaned up a little bit. But, I mean, it's going to come down to Seleucids and Alverni. I forget these arch towers back there, they're just firing down, probably getting a couple of kills here and there. Routing stuff with their uh, fire ammos. I think I just put ammo and arrows together there, that was just a bit weird. They are pushing these guys back, they're now onto the solid uh, ground they are of the sand. Or solid as it is. Um, they're no longer in the water, or some of them aren't. Don't have to have wet feet anymore. But yeah, they did actually get around, you can see here these Bactrian Royal Guard are in a really sticky position here. This is a really good angle. I mean, these uh, silver shields need to be doing well and quick. Um, what's oh, is, they're all just taking up some creeping archers. Here come the pikes. Here come the pikes. That final unit of Royal Peltas must be like stuck there. 
I'd send the shield bearer, send this one round as well. You just gotta keep flooding stuff through this gap. Cause as much of an issue. And then you can get off here and then you can get inside. Arverni might want to slow down and just hope that the Seleucids um, breaks through soon. I mean, it looks like he has a bit. Is he still firing his artillery? He is still firing his artillery. Don't know what at. Oh, they've got their general dead? This Macedon army has got no general. It must have been sniped by the artillery. Um, and does Kush have a general? Uh, yes. Ever so slightly. But yeah, Macedon's looking thin on the ground, in fairness. Oh, it is going to be close. It is going to be close. I did not realize how thin, like, Macedon is. He's literally got, like, bare units. I mean, this is probably his most fresh unit. This is Foot Companion 150. Which is obviously... Oh, he shouldn't be using explosive round. It's really fun to watch, but it does not get you kills. Um, but yeah, I mean, they look like they're doing okay. I mean, I've actually still got a fresh unit of Thorax Pikes here that's still going, which is huge. Um, Kush is just running around with his cavalry, doing a lot of damage. He's uh, Verni not even protecting his uh, artillery. Oh, his, arm, his archers, sorry. Rome's still in this game with some Bale Erics. We've got Oswan here. Um, they still have a general just about. These Oswan are now going to chop down these Cretans. But there they are in, and there you go. That shield bearer did go around, and it did sneak around. Are the pikes up? Please tell me the pikes are in. They are. Have they got their pikes down? They do have their pikes down. That will force these guys back. Yeah, you can see losing decisively. That is good. And there you go, another break here. This is really, really good now for the attackers. They're looking in the ascendancy. It's still, balance power is dead even. Uh, it could go either way. I think if another general is lost, that could really shift the balance of power. Um, has Kush still got his general? He still does have his general. There's three men left. No way. Oh, he's about to rout. I don't know why this Oswald general is just here. You might as well push him on. Push him on, go down here. Go in the elite uh, Persians. I know there's pikes here, but they've... Literally, there's not much else. You could, or you could go around here. But yeah, these guys are just getting sniped. Get a move on. Arverni just seems to be taking his time now, which is a bit silly. Like, I mean, he's just getting focused down by, like, slingers and stuff. Do not know what's happening. Is he just waiting until Rome uses all his ammo, or what? Good thing to see Rome is still focusing down stuff with his foot... Uh, foot focusing down his foot companions. Oh, no. I did not realize Bactria had an elephant general. That might help save them. Um, they better have left ammo solutions for the elephant. I am... Oh, I don't know who I'm rooting for. I kind of want to root for the attackers because they've had a really rough time. Like, Rome just got obliterated. The pikes are in. I've just realized Bactria sent his pikes in. That's going to force back these shield bearers. I'd fall back if I was the uh, attackers here. Fall back. Um, just wait. Wait it out. You'll, you'll eventually break through somewhere else. There is not many more places that they can turn. If you break through here, these pikes are in a very sticky position. You, they can surround them and kill them. I mean, the, all the pikes could turn around, but then you have to kill this Thorax Sword, which is easily enough to do as well. Um, they might as well send their pikes up to go and contend. Thorax versus Thorax. Um, please still have ammo. I think this Syrian archer here still has ammo. It better be saving it for this Indian armoured. But, I mean, this is... Yeah, it's very close. Our Verdi's now looking very thin. I'm going to say the defender's going to win on this side. This side could go either way. Kush has lost his general. Yeah, I don't know what Our Verdi did. Our Verdi just at the end just just stopped attacking. He did so well. He got so far. And then he just ran out of steam. Or what? I don't know. Or well, he was just seriously just waiting on Seleucids. But he could have been proactive while waiting. He didn't need to be all out offensive. He just needed to attack on a few fronts. Keep stuff occupied. His foot companions are winning though against Oswan. And then these archers here are going to get killed. All these slingers, they're going to get killed off. So it's just going to come down to Seleucids. Uh, I think he can do it. I honestly think he can. This archer unit, route Bactria. Um, he just has to say, oh, okay, Bactria has two units of pikes. That might be a bit more of an issue because he can now plug up both these gaps. But if he can send stuff around here as well, uh, then and just get around and threaten, then he might be okay. But it's going to take a long time. Might lose a lot of lives by then. If he sends his general, that might be the best. Best idea. But yeah, these guys are not looking so hot. How they're still holding in this glorious sun. No one will know.
You can just see in the background, like, the next liming formula with all the pikes. Does it? Oh, it looks glorious. But I mean, yeah, so I mean, it does look like these are. Uh, well, it's just Syrians and a tiny uh, silver shields holding it. I mean, actually, this is very viable now. These pikes aren't looking the right way. Send the unit. Uh, maybe not the. Sh oh, yeah, send the shield bearers around and get these guys. Or send these silver shields around. These Thorax have overcommitted, so around these guys. Punish uh, Bactria for doing this. This is just silly on his half. So around this, and then just push on into this choke point. And the elephants are still waiting. And there you go, it is, yeah, Arvon, he's almost gone. He's just got, was it, a chosen sword unit? Uh, numbers say you should win that. And he might, because this is a, these guys don't have a general either. I mean, if they could mop... <laughs> actually, Arvoni could probably mop up all these units here. Yeah, actually, that's kind of concerning for the defenders. But yeah, ser seriously, they need to get inside. Surround this unit. Thorax swords. There you go. They're finally going. Please, just route this unit. It's now balanced power. is ever so slightly in favor of the defenders. Uh, probably just because of the elephant. If they can route that elephant, though. It's just quite happy to stand here at the back. These archers have ammo. Please have ammo. Easy way to tell if they have ammo, they have their bows out. They don't have their bows out. That's a sad sight. Um, you might want to save ammo then on every single unit that has javis. Um, which is going to be like your Royal Peltas. I think that Royal Peltas did actually come up. Yeah, that's that fresh unit of Royal Peltas here. They kept all the way in reserve. It's just now going to be a bit of a standoff. Uh, I'm waiting on who's going to go forward first. Look at this back tree in Royal Guard just... Chilling in the middle. It's stuck between a pike line. They're in a pike sandwich. And they're going to fall back. Smart thing to do. And here we go. Assault. And they're going to charge in. Very nice. They're going to get inside the pike line. This tiny little uh, unit back to Royal Guard. And the pikes come down. And I'm going to say that that unit of just pikes just got absolutely wrecked. But it didn't. It did not get wrecked. They lost a few men, but... Oh! I don't know. New minions losing. Pikes are doing okay. Factional Guard obviously losing. Here come the elephants, though. The elephants get sent in. Oh, no. Oh, no. You better have Javis, Royal Peltas. You better have Javis. As the cow comes through as well. Breaks it up first. And here come the elephants. Not the greatest of charges, but it'll do. And that unit's uh, having a rough time. Please, for the love of God, defenders. Oh no, it's attackers, sorry. You better have some ammo. Balance power now is shifted massively back in favor of the attackers. As you say, as you wish. Did the Alverdi actually route this unit? Yeah, oh no. The, the Alverdi should have, I'm pretty sure, could have routed that. Balance power there. Mercedes is about to lose his general. I mean, he's got nothing left, so he, he's okay to go. It's just now going to come down to back trade. It's going to have to do this. Winning decisively. The general is not looking so hot down here. Can he do it? I don't know. He's walking quite slowly through this uh, this line. Has anyone seen the banner bearer? I don't know, sir. He's probably trampled by an elephant. More than likely. Yeah, the shield bearer is not looking so good. Royal Peltas yet. And now the general... I keep the general in here right now. Keep the general in there. Uh, cavalry are harder to trample than a infantry. All I can say to that. Uh, Thorax Pikes here. Having a really, really tough time. But they're winning... Oh, they're not even winning in numbers. These guys are winning decisively. They're not even... Oh, no. They are fighting. Sort of, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, these Pikes need to go forward a bit. Keep going forward. Just keep charging. Infantry... Oh, well, Archer's not getting sent in. These, yeah, elephants are starting to lose some troops, so they're exhausted now. And here we go. You can see the chaos of the elephants. Another one drops. All it needs is the general to die, and this and this will probably chain route. This will cause a chain route. And the elephants are obviously very susceptible to dying. I mean, they're going to do a good charge into the back of these pikes. That's really good. Hopefully they don't run in front of the pikes that they are now. 
That one's dead, yeah. That's what happens when you run in front of the pikes. After you charge through the back of them. Uh, General still alive, I want to say. Yeah, just about. There's only two of them left. He's been very careful. And there you go. These elephants... Or three of them left, sorry. And Seleucid survives another day. Oh, it's close. It's so close. He actually is going to come down to the final few moments. I actually don't know. They need to keep this pike unit alive. Um... I mean, but they have a fresh one here. But, I mean, if they can surround it, they all they have to do is surround it. They don't even need to... Uh, and then, there you go. Losing slightly of this. I mean, they're just trying to force the cavalry through. It's not a very solid pike line right now. And they are going to fall back with the pikes. That allows the cavalry to chase them down. That is going to be a big mistake. Now the cavalry's in, in amongst this pike formation. And it's going after the general. That's why. It's going after the general. Um, yeah, they're actually... Uh, the general's not looking so hot for the Seleucids either. He needs to be careful. He needs to be careful. He doesn't want to overextend. And he's gone into the back of the pikes. I would have gone for the general. Carry on going for the elephant general. He was he's for the taking. There's still there's two of them left now. And these Thorax pikes are losing decisively. Oh, it's gonna be close. I mean Mastodon's now coming up with his tiny units. He's got a tiny unit of pikes. He's got some slingers left with ammo. That could be huge. Um, these pikes are not looking so hot either. They should eventually break. He's still got half his general unit here. I think that might be his general there. These, yeah, Hellenic Calfrax, they need to get a move on. Oh, the general, is he dead? No, he's not. This is the final unit. This is the general himself here. Um, oh, and so the Seleucid general's about to waver as well. Oh my gosh, it's going to come down to... I think... Oh no, because... I was about to say, Masson is a general, but his general's also dead. Oh, any side could chain route then. Bactri's chain routing. I mean, Sluice's chain routing as well. Oh my gosh, it is literally going to come down to the last few units. This is insanely close. As the elephant's just in the background, just like, yep, I'm chilling here. And then, oh, I thought they were about to route with the shield bearers. I think that's it. I think the defenders have got it. Well played to the defenders. Um, the attack was very unlucky there. Um, if Rome, I think, had just been able to hold on a little bit longer at the beginning, then they might have had a better chance. If Roman and Arvoni could link up, Mastodon maybe as well. They had such a rough time with the attacks at the beginning. But I think they had that for the taking under the attackers if they'd uh, just been a little bit more patient. Let Seleucid do his assault at the right time as well because Seleucid was causing a lot of issues at the back. But well done to the defenders. That was an excellent, uh, excellent battle. But that was sent in by Gasleek, um, who is a, a member of the Discord, as is Grim Guardian. Um, so well done to both of them for winning a really, really good uh, siege. Um, so yeah, we'll have a quick look at Gasleek's army first. He's uh, got 175 kills with his general, who he lost right at the end. 100 kills with Hellenic Cataphracts. 150 with his elite Persian archers. Um, his Royal Guard only got 123, is a bit of a shame. His Pike's getting 238, and his Thorax Sword's getting 151. Grim Guardian, who played as Mesaisley, got 152 kills with his Numidian Riders. Uh, 132 with Skirmishers is pretty good. 245 with Desert Cohort, that's very good for them. Uh, Desert Legionnaires, 154. And his Desert Vigilates, better to not speak of them. That's why they were a good target to go after. Very easy to kill. Aloe the Bleached. He's playing as Kush. 100 kills with his general. He got 152 kills with his Royal Kushite Archers. Maybe better just to bring normal Kushite Archers. And then he could have brought some more uh, like elite infantry. Uh, 223 kills with his Armored Show to Warriors. Um, and his normal Show to Warriors getting 165 by the looks of it. And that's that's kind of it, really. And then C Going Bread, 22, who played as Mastodon. 156 kills with his Mercenary Cretans. Uh, his Rodian Slings. He could have brought another Cretan. I probably would have done that. Uh, his Mercy Rodians brought 100 and got 175, uh, 73, sorry. Uh, his Foot Companions were not worth spending that much money for that amount of death, uh, amount of kills, sorry. But yeah, he didn't really get many kills generally. He got the least amount of kills out of any player. Um, 126 was Royal Peltas. And then Rouge, who was playing as, uh, um, Rome, sorry, uh, 106, 108 kills with the, uh, Syrian Archers. 136 with his Praetorians. And then nothing else really did that well, actually. He had a rough time. Then Harry Hock, who's playing as Arverni, probably one of the more successful attackers and did get the most kills out of anyone, actually, on the entire field. Um, 
Got 123 with his ballista, that's very good. Uh, his chosen sword's 177. 101 with his naked sword, that's actually not too bad. And 268 with his oath sworn. Then Markstar, who got uh, 197 kills with his uh, foot companions. And 255 kills with Royal Peltas. Jeez, that's really good. And the shield bearers getting 140. Well done to him. Then Boom Howlet, who was playing as the Seleucids. Um, he got he got a fair amount of kills as well. I mean, he was the last one, the Seleucids. Um, 183 kills with the Storax Pikes. Silver Shield's getting 170. Um, his Shield Bearer's getting 94. Uh, and his Royal Peltas getting 204. And his Archer's getting 103. So, I mean, they did pretty well. But if you guys enjoyed, please remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're new around here, and leave a comment to show your support. And until next time, Legionnaires, bye for now.